Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, day three, the Marquee Show 2024. Uh, we have the honor of sitting here with Mark. McIntosh. McIntosh. We're, what is the name of your company, Mark? Team Wedding Marketing. Team Wedding Marketing. Tell us something about yourself. We had the honor of sitting at you lunch know, with you. At lunch with you, but you know. We thought it was something else like you. So were. I didn't even say this on stage, but I, I owned a DJ company for 17 years before I got in. So that was my first career. Okay. Like all these DJs in this room are here because we laid the groundwork in 1978 wow. when, when the big Speak. question was, should I hire a band or a DJ? And we got to ride the whole Saturday Night Fever. Like I was playing that stuff when it was new. Wow. And and did that for 17 years, went into a career as a wedding expo producer in D.C., Baltimore and Richmond, and then was preparing an exit from that business anyway. And COVID sort of sped up that process and it gave us time. Uh, my partner in the company is Renee Roberts, and she was also a show producer. We knew each other from the industry. We had this plan of building a marketing company for wedding pros and we had it all planned and then no time to do it well COVID changed wow. that we had it time to do all it the time you need and so we um i'd like to say we were pivoting before it was fashionable and mm. so we started this in in 2000 so our tagline is that we help wedding pros have marketing that is as awesome as they are and that is the big problem like people are great at what they do but their marketing doesn't show it and their sales suffer as a result. Hmm. Wow, so we had someone that uh, we're associated with uh, that came down a moment ago and he spoke so highly of you. He said, man, I gotta change my whole website. He was, convic <laughs> he was completely convicted. Yes, yes. And he was like, man, I, I have to change it. So talk to us about that process. Oh, what? yeah. So, and as I was preparing this presentation for this group, and I always like to customize it for the audience that I'm speaking to, uh, I visited 350 DJ websites. Now, normally I would not visit that many websites to prepare, but I was looking for stuff that was good and I couldn't find any of it. And, and, and so as part, even though our company does, like we'll handle somebody's complete marketing program. All roads in the marketing process ultimately lead through your website. Yeah. And so we end up as a result of that building a lot of websites because that's the most like everything, whether it's a referral or they saw you to a wedding show, they saw your ad somewhere, they saw your social, they saw a press release, like whatever they heard you on a podcast all roads ultimately lead through your website and if they bounce out at that point it's so costly because you did something right to wave your flag and get that attention and then you lose them the, the website is the last stop before they fill out your contact form call you email you reach out to you to ultimately buy from you and when they derail at your website that's a costly loss because it's one that's so preventable. Yeah. So what are some of the critical errors that you see? The most critical error that I see with DJ websites is that they're selling stuff and not dancing. Okay. Hmm. Where Could you please explain more in depth? Okay, me, so when somebody is buying a DJ for their wedding, and this goes for any type of event, but I do most of my work in weddings. When a, somebody's buying a DJ for their wedding, the thing they want is that end result. They want everybody to dance and have a great time. Then you go to the website and it's like, we have confetti cannons and we have <laughs> the greatest speakers and we have up lighting and we have all this stuff that has is all like, part of the end result, but you're not selling that end result. You're selling like a list of stuff without selling, like all this stuff comes together 
to have an awesome wedding that people dance and have a great time and remember and talk about finally forever. And it's that emotion, that end result. It's all about, they, mostly what we see is it's all about the tools that you use to get to that end result, mm. not the end result. And it's easily fixable. Mm. Mm. Well, Go ahead, Jeffrey. No, I'm just saying, I mean, <laughs> he's, he's jumping all over. What, but, I mean, you're right. A lot of times you look and the first thing you see is a facade or, you know, DJ booth or, you know, like you say, cannons or we're doing this. Uh, but I've always been the one that says that a bride wants to see herself in a picture or a picture that she can see herself in. So most of ours on our website is all pictures of brides dancing or dance floors packed. We don't, we try not to do, our equipment is on a whole nother page or whatever, you, you know, you're going to go and find it. It's not on the front page, it's where it's strolls. The to. expectation of the client mm -hmm. is that you have good equipment, yeah. that you have insurance, that you have, like, you do business license, all that stuff. If people tout that as like a reason to hire me, that's like table stakes. That's like what you should have to even be in this business. So, so you don't, go ahead. So you're basically saying, or I'm asking, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, or we shouldn't even have that on the website at all? No, you should have it, but it shouldn't be what you lead with. You lead with, because you don't want to sell, you're not going to sell any of that stuff until they first hire you as a DJ. Like you're not going and just doing the, you know, dancing on the clouds for somebody that hired another DJ. Like that's all upsell stuff. That's all stuff that leads to the end result, which is great. But ultimately, they got to like you as a DJ first before any of that other stuff comes Even into play. Matters. Yeah. And yeah. people don't play that part of it up well enough. It's all, if anything, like I, I showed an example in my, in my presentation of a website that listed 25 things. Uh, that they did photo booth and this all this stuff one of those 25 things was award-winning DJs like you're skipping that part like that's the most important part you should spend 90% of your marketing and I say websites but that's yeah that's the biggest mm -hmm. part of your marketing 90% of your marketing should be on we're going to do an amazing job at your wedding and everybody's going to dance and everybody's going to have a good time. They care about that end result, not what you had to do to get them there. Hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I oh, mean, yeah. I'm trying not to say that. He might look at my website. So, hey, uh, hey speak Okay, freely. so I'll tell you about your website, which I, have, I don't <laughs> think I saw. And I said, in, I said in my talk that the... You know, if you want to, you want to meet with me and show me, prove me that you're I'm wrong, and show me that you have a good website, then show it to me. Here's the problem: what you see is only one part of the process. So what I did in my research is I went to the top markets in the country, and I know that you guys are in Dallas, and I that was one of those markets, and I went to and Googled wedding DJ Dallas. And I looked at the first 10 DJ websites that came up in the search. So even if your site's awesome, it didn't come up in the 10, no, in the did. top 10 in the search. It, and well, you so can, that's still a problem. And yeah. so that's still a problem. Yeah. As beautiful as it is, it's that tree falling in the woods that nobody hears when your site's awesome, but nobody finds it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They find us, but yeah, I'm with you because I had talked to somebody about getting us higher rankings, going in and do some more SEO work, but we, we're going to get on that. There are some very basic steps that you can do that I can tell you, and I said in my presentation that I'm gonna show you today how to double your business in the, next 12, in the next 12 months. I've never said that at one of these presentations before, but I just know that if you did just the basic right things that nobody else is doing, like you're gonna crush it. It will not be that hard. The bar is so low. Low. <laughs> the bar wow. is low. Well, uh, what are some of those basic things, if you're willing to share that with the listeners? Okay, so the, you know, I said it before, I want to see more focus on dancing and less focus on gear. Okay. You also, a lot of websites are proposing before the first date. Like they are coming to your website to check you out. They've somehow became aware of you. They're coming to check you out. And so many sites lead with, 
here's our packages, here's how much they cost, book now. It's all about, now I, you want call to actions on your site, mm. ways for people to reach out. But so much of the focus is closing the sale before you've made Without the sale. Without even creating yeah. the emotion. Yeah. For them to even want to buy, and so yeah. you're, you know, again, you're you're asking them to marry you before you've even had a date, <laughs> and that is, you know, that that is the uh, the Catfish. problem that we see, mm. <laughs> and and then being easy to reach, uh, okay. having contact forms throughout your site, having your phone number, address, everything, make it easy for people to reach you. Okay. I, there was one example I gave of a site. Fill out this form if you want a book. If you don't want a book, then send us an email. Like that's not a good experience for somebody that's coming wow. there to, uh, to to check you out. Wow. But they're all about check the date. Book us now. Book they're, now. They're book a bit now blunt, aren't they? doesn't need to be on your homepage. They're not even close to that part of the process yet. You know, those are some very good points. And you're right. So many people do that. They they jump right out the gate. Trying to Packages. close, the, trying to close the sale. Wow. And now I agree. Putting prices on your site is something that you should do. Now, okay. if you asked me ten years ago, I would have said no. Leave your prices off. You want them to contact you. You want to be able to sell your value. You that's want all how of that. It was. And that's how it was. But now, yeah. and you yeah. want to know why? Now it's even. It used to be like people would ask you how much it cost because they didn't have any idea what else to ask. They never bought, they've never hired a DJ before. They don't know what to ask you. So they ask the question that works everywhere. Now there's an even bigger reason that people do that is because, and I'll, I will blame my friends at the Knot and Wedding Wire mm. for this. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. Speak. Mm. Because your profile that you're paying hundreds of dollars a month for on wedding wire to show people how great you are to wave your flag to get them to do business with you to start to at least put you into their possibles to start the vetting process that button on your profile under the contact form does not say tell me how great you are tell me what an awesome job you'll do at my wedding it says request pricing and you see that on every profile and people think, well, I guess that's what we're supposed to be asking. And that's I guess the that's what's question. the most important. Yeah. And so, you know, it's going to come out anyway. And also when you do put your pricing on, you're identifying to some degree your right fit client. Because if somebody, if you're a $2,000 DJ and they have a $500 budget, like you don't even want to waste your time with them if it's not within the, like if their if their budget is 1500 and you're 1800 all right you yeah. know maybe you can move them up but mm -hmm. if their budget is 500 and you're 2000 your chances are you're not getting there okay. and so i would much rather see you have fewer inbound leads but have the inbound leads that mm -hmm. are your right fit client and you do that also through your website. If you're, sh if you're a high-end DJ, you're showing images of you at high-end venues. If you are a lower price DJ, you're not showing pictures of you at high-end venues because that's gonna confuse the message. Mm. So if you can identify, if you can show them through the images you show and the words that you speak, who you're looking for as a client, you're going to weed out the people that will never do business with you anyway, and they won't even reach out. And that, that is going to make your job easier because you can focus on doing a better job selling to a smaller number of people. You don't need more leads. You need better leads. All right. I like and you that. really need sales. He preaches more he's than leads. He's preaching the gospel over sales. here. Let the church say amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Church of sales and marketing. I love it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that, that was deep. No wonder he came out quick, had his website open, started to, oh, I do this, I do this, I do that. You know, he's do, I'm doing a proposal here, you know. So, yeah, so I'm going to go look at mine and take a look at it tonight. Well, maybe. But I know I don't do that. I know we got dancing, strolling across, but where we're coming up is not great. Well, we will, uh, and we offer this to everybody. Like, I would sit down with you on a Zoom, and in real time, Putting on my glasses as a user coming to your site for the first time, I'll go through the process with you.
tell you what I think, run a few tests in the back end to see what's working and not working, mm -hmm. and give you some actionable tips on how to do it free of charge. Just go to teamwedding.com, schedule for the marketing checkup, and, and we'll do that. And yeah, of course, at the same uh, time, write I Write that will, down, please, uh, producer. Uh, teamwedding.com. Dot com. And then, wow. And we'll do that. And you know, of course, at the same time, I'm gonna talk to you about perhaps trusting us to do it, because yeah. that is the thing. We're in this industry. You guys are DJs. What do you do when the client comes to you and says, yeah, I don't know if I need a DJ or not. I got this great Spotify playlist and all we really need to do is rent some speakers and play. We talk to it. them about the importance of having a real DJ. And having not Someone an amateur, having that, a yeah. professional, yeah. all yeah. right? How can the Spotify look out and change the mood of the room? How can it know when it's time to, yeah, yeah we talked to them about yeah. that. And so, the same people that preach that day after day after day to their couples. Don't use an amateur. It's your wedding day. It's the most important day of your life, da, 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 da. You can't trust it to an amateur. Use a professional. Those same people who say that stuff every day are the turn around, design their own brochures, design their own website, design their own business cards, and do all their mm. own marketing. And yeah, that's we, not we what do. They do. We're, we're guilty. Yeah, we are. It might be worth. When you have, if so, if you guys, you tell me, you get somebody good, you get a right fit client, and you get them in a meeting, whether you do it at the coffee shop, in an office, face to face, on a Zoom, however you do that meeting when you're trying to close a sale. You get somebody good sitting in that meeting, how often do you close that sale? Half the time? More? More. More. Okay. More. Yeah. All right. So, so let's say you book, for every two good meetings you have, you book one or more. All right, so if there's two people a month that come to your website, that found you, that like you, everything up to this point, they go to your website and they bounce out because of that, and you don't get those two leads, then you don't make that one sale. And you multiply that over the course of the year, and that DIY website just got really, really expensive. DIY, do it yourself. In business that you lost. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think, he said one more thing that was really good too. Um, uh, women should be the designers of your website because men trying to design websites are not a good thing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Most DJ websites are designed by men for men. There are females mostly involved in this buying process. Mostly. Look at the other websites, the venue websites, the photographer websites, the wedding planner websites, generally using softer colors, softer language, softer fonts. And yeah. I go to DJ websites and they're green and yellow and all caps and just <laughs> by, designed by men. By now. <laughs> yep. No, you're right. I'm just saying that. You're right. Yeah, you're, you're right. He's your producer over here laughing at me, but he's shaking his head yes as he's doing it. Cause I you mean, know. You're probably looking at, probably looking at his so website. And so you know how a text message you get a text message with all caps and you like take back out there oh, screaming yeah. at me. Yeah. For some reason, DJs have that caps lock button on their keyboard every time they're <laughs> writing, because they're all in caps. And, and seriously, look at any, you got to model what you do, because they're not just comparing you against the other DJ websites. They're comparing you to websites that they use every day. Mm -hmm. Go to those sites, major retailers, Nobody's using all caps. Nobody is using all caps, but for some reason, DJs are using all caps. Yeah, caps lock. And breathe bright, obnoxious colors, and yeah. It, it's just like, you, it's such an easy fix that could just, like it would fix a whole lot of things. It gets a whole, go look at your analytics if you have analytics on your website and yeah. see how many people come in and then compare that to how many people reach out. There's a vast difference in those numbers, and you oh, can yeah. tighten those numbers. We got up. some homework, Mike. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if you don't have analytics, you should. Yeah. Because you don't know what's happening. Did, did we not know who sat down at the table with us today? No, we didn't. No, we, were, we really we did. We were not aware of that. Wow. Uh, I came in. KJ the room was, KJ was like, picking his brain, but yeah. now we know. So, yeah. <laughs> TeamWedding.com. Yeah. Do you have Instagram or Facebook or anything with it? Yeah, Team Wedding MKTG. Okay. Um, yeah, just go to, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, well we wanna, 
Go ahead. We just want to thank you for sitting down with us, uh, taking some time out of Pleasure's your day. Pleasure's mine. Just got off the stage. It's yeah. Like, yeah, 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 he's fired good. up, <laughs> still ready to talk. All right. Yeah. Because this is important, because what you're talking about affects numbers. Yeah, money. Yes, and if your numbers are not right, sooner or later your business is going to close down. Yep. And it may be your own fault. You yep. know, that showroom over there with all of that cool stuff, cool stuff there's a whole lot of people in there right now who are funding a very expensive hobby because if you can't sell it and it's sitting there <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man i, so do I we, speak of the truth so do we have the shots fired uh sound effects <laughs> i want some sound effects when <laughs> oh this thing's produced god. wow hey. no but that's the truth you're telling the truth we got a whole bunch of fluff i call it fluff toys and we, we're right, we don't sell and it. We you just, go spend a couple grand on something in there that you can sell to a wedding for $200. Why would you not spend three, four, five grand on a website that brings you more business to then be able to go buy more stuff and actually use it once you have it? Amen. Hey. Let the church say facts. amen. Yeah. Facts. Wow. More, Man. Hey, wow. we what enjoyed it. It was a blessing. Uh, and we know that our listeners will enjoy it as yes. well. And I'm pretty sure you'll get a slew of more inquiries. Yeah. I appreciate it. Because Thank we you. need more of, more people like you or your business in the industry. Because for some sad or some reason, we think we know everything. We do. And DJs think that more than anybody. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. no. But seriously, you have... <laughs> Like, I'm not expecting everybody, like you're really good at what you do. And that doesn't mean you can market what you do well. I mean, primarily with our company. Different hat. Yeah, yeah. Companies, you can't do everything you well. Well. Yeah, yeah. And companies come to us and they just turn over their marketing. So they, it's a retainer. Hey, you do it. They like, you do it. Because uh -huh. they're too, they want, would rather focus on closing sales and producing and yeah. not time on messing around with their website and absolutely. it works absolutely it, <laughs> it's just like djing it's a job uh some of us like you say you you know the time that you started you know that era you know birth us mm -hmm. and it took time for you to home in on your skill whether it was from a dj standpoint as far as playing your music uh, or from an MC standpoint, that wasn't something that you just rolled out of the wound and hey, I'm here. You know, you had to work on that. Yeah. So in order to do what you guys do, that's even more because yeah. the industry, in regards to online, it changes rapidly, oh. and you don't have the time to pay attention to everything that's changing when it's changing. And I don't know all this stuff. We have a whole team of people. Like okay. SEO stuff, there's a big change in search oh, right now yeah. because of AI. Now, what, what happens is, like, we love Google ads. Like, if you're doing an ad, if you're spending any money on marketing, you should, the first place you should go is Google. buy Google ads because they're intent-based. People are going there for a reason. And the... Um, uh, but that's going to change a little bit as people go to chat gpt for searches instead of google for searches there's wow. going to be less people going to google and less people showing the ads and right now you can't advertise on chat gpt but that might be changing i'm sure it is but wow. seo is still important because a lot of what chat's relying on is what ranks on google so it is still important but things are they're changing there's a whole bunch of google's changed a bunch of rules they've changed the rankings some websites shot up some websites dropped down reddit Boom. which has been around for years and nobody paid attention to it is now showing up at the top of the search because google partnered with them and if you can put content there that's one of those ways now that you can cut through the clutter and you know it is just but you've got to we've got you know, we've got different team members with different specialties because it's hard. I can tell you the one thing that's harder now for your industry than it was in my day. What's easier is the equipment is a hell of a lot lighter than it was back oh, then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. um, but the I, when I was in that business, it was the yellow pages. Yeah. It was wedding White magazines pages, and pages. wedding expos and referrals like that's it we just had to pay a bunch of money 
to advertise and that's how we got business. Yellow Pages is gone, shows are still work, not quite as well as they used to. The magazines have all moved online, but now there's a hundred ways to get the word out. A lot of them are free, but they take time to do well. So your job of marketing is way harder than I had to do when I was in that business. Wow, yep. Well. It takes a team. It's a it lot. It takes a team. And we, hey, we want to thank you again for coming on with us. Hey, this has been a. Very enlightening. Yes, very. Yes, and uh, I look forward to hopefully more people <laughs> on our side of the fence trusting you guys. Yeah, or at least talking needed. to you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you talk to them and look at it and they look at it, it's kind of hard not to trust after that because, yep. you know, when you realize that you clean your house and it's still dirty, uh, <laughs> you have to make a decision. Yep. Uh, all right. And on that note, we are out. All right. Well, all thank right, you thank guys. You. We'll see you soon. Uh,